I am wrestling, you're not weak for me. Celebrate what I am. Celebrate what I have been. Celebrate what I represent. And celebrate the many ways I have impacted your life. I will survive this test as I have survived others. I am forever etched into the very fiber of all mankind. The world needs me. Time is on my side. History guarantees me. I am wrestling. Do not wait for me. What's up, everybody? This is episode number 47 of the T-Row and Frankie Show, brought to you, as always, by Defense Soap. Defend what you have built. I'm joined, as always, by my main man, Tommy Rollins. Tommy, what's going on? Nothing much, brother. We got the Tribe on. They're down 3-0, game six. The City of Champions is about to, you know, maybe maybe not about to, but I hope they do crown another champion. I'll go, I'll go for the Cubs, but we talked about this last episode. so It's November 1st, wrestling season's in the air. Yes, and uh, we're rocking, weekend. man. We got the election in a few days. I know. I'm excited. Hey, I want I want to hit I want to hit on the election real quick. But I I, I had a voicemail, and uh, I actually have a loaner phone right now. My iPhone just shut down two nights ago, and I took them in, and they're like, "Yeah, it's a it's a malfunction phone. We got to get you a new one." But they can only give me the exact model, so they gave me some BS loaner phone. So I don't have any contacts. So like random numbers are calling me and stuff, you know. Right. And uh, someone called. I think I know who it is, but he called me and he said. He said, uh, the, the coaching thing, why do all the best wrestlers coach in college, right? All right, uh-huh. right? And he said, it's an economic thing, Tommy, which is, we should have thought of this. And I, the, the voicemail was kind of met, blurry, but what I think he was saying was that, well, in all the other major sports in the U.S., guys who are great at what they do have a 15-year you know, lag time on becoming coaches because they're going to pursue their professional careers. And in wrestling, that doesn't happen. E- even the best guys who are still competing are, generally speaking, still around college. They're volunteer assistants. They're, they're that kind of thing. That's um, that. I agree that that can be a part of it, but I don't think that's the leader well, leading reason. It might not be the whole thing, but that that's an interesting thought. You know, especially yeah. why the best players aren't athletes in other sports. I'm sorry, aren't coaches in other sports? And you know, he said it's just not the most lucrative because they're pursuing more lucrative opportunities, which is professional athletics. And in wrestling, that's just not the case. That's good. Good point. I'll take it. It's a, it's it's another example. Yeah, it's good. Good thought. I think it was my buddy Jordy, but I'm not quite sure. Jordy who? Jordy Crass. He's a he's a Fargo champ. Okay. But I know <laughs> that's who I think. I couldn't hear the voicemail. Good. That's who I think it was because I don't have any numbers in my phone. So <laughs> awesome. We'll, we'll see. Um. Yeah, so I wanted to take the floor on the. I want to go on a political rant, Tommy. Oh gosh, here we go. Well, you know, gonna, I, this is going to be huge. Well, I haven't done any. I haven't done one yet. I know, I know. And I know. people are going to get mad at us. They're well, going to they're gonna get mad at me at least. I, I don't know what your stance on, my, on what I say is going to be. So they're at least going to get mad. <laughs> Mad at me, which it's not the first time or last time people will be mad at me, so it's okay. You know, I think everybody knows that you're a Trump fan, but yeah. I really don't know where you're going to go. Okay. I don't know where you're going to go, even though I know it's got a, probably a Trump lean to sure. it. Sure. And so, if you remember all the way back, I mean, this is long back, I called Trump winning um, many, many, many moons ago. And, and for me at that point, it was just kind of entertaining. He was saying funny things. He's goofy, right? So I'm like, I, you know, I, I can get some entertainment on this guy. I can see that the American public is kind of behind him. But I was also kind of ashamed to be supporting him. I, I, I wanted to support him, but I kind of felt like it was something that I shouldn't be doing, Tommy. <laughs> and you felt dirty. I felt, felt a little dirty about it, you know? <laughs> and uh, and <laughs> really, I really did, you know? Got and it, so, got it. Um, you know, I would retweet something here and there, but I wouldn't really post and, you know, and if it, if I'm with a group of friends, I'll tell you. I, you know, I it's like old timey to say, oh, we don't talk about election. You know, if you ask me, I'm gonna tell you. Oh uh, yeah, what I funny. think. So uh, my mom still doesn't like to talk about. Uh, I said, mom, let's talk about who you're gonna vote for. She's like, no. I'm like, well, I'm voting for Trump, mom, and here's why. <laughs> <laughs> and she still doesn't share her opinion. No, she won't. But I'm, I think I'm convinced her to drain the swamp. So anyway, so Tommy, let me tell you where I'm at right now. So All right, where where are you? Well, I was an ashamed Trump supporter, right? Right. But I and I, I knew I didn't like Hillary. I knew that for a, for right. a fact. Um 
But I was still kind of like, well, I don't know that Trump is the way to go. He's, he's, he just says stupid things sometimes. He's not very eloquent. Uh, but, but at the same time, the more I listened, the more what he was saying made sense. And the more it was clear to me he's not an establishment candidate. And then what happened was WikiLeaks has been dropping this information and dropping this information. And they've been doing it for a couple Julian months. Julian Assang is a boss. Oh, my God. And so he's been dropping this information, Tommy, for months. And... The failure of the mainstream media to cover it has just been making me more and more and more and more angry because say, say a thing like, you know what Trump said, I'm not going to repeat it. He said some nasty shit, right? But that being said, Tommy, you and I have been in locker rooms and that stuff said, not that it's something that those people, you know, and you can think of those people on your team that said that kind of stuff. Not that those people, you're proud of those people, but you, you've heard it said. So when something like that is covered, but then you hear Hillary saying something like, well, I have a public policy and a private policy, which she's pretty much just flat out saying, I lied to the American public. No doubt. And that doesn't get coverage. And you're like, wow, she's just admit, she's literally admitting that she lies to the American public and tells the banker or, you know, or lies to the bankers. It could be either way. She's lying to somebody and she's admitting it. And that gets no coverage. So, yeah, it is, yeah. yeah, so I'm getting more and more, more annoyed. And, and WikiLeaks is putting out great information. And a lot of people obviously aren't, they're not reaching out and seeing and what WikiLeaks is putting out. And they're kind of just sticking with what CNN or Fox or who, you know. Well, what, I mean, here, here's part of it. Sure. And, and, I'm, and I'm with you leading into this. And I'm just being realistic. Here's part of it is that Trump's comments are more polarizing than the corruption that Hillary participates in because Hillary's corruption is not as headline grabbing. As no, because the, I mean, the news doesn't show it, Tom. All right, let me tell you this. Okay, let's let you. Uh, now, 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 you got me going, Tommy. <laughs> I'm just. Okay. I, I'm with you. I'm just flat saying out, why. Flat out, Hillary should be in jail, Tommy. Let me let me just. These are rhetorical questions. But if she isn't guilty, if Hillary is not guilty of crimes, why did she bleach bit her computer files after a congressional subpoena? Why did she order her phones to be smashed with hammers? If she isn't guilty, why were many of her staff granted immunity? If she is not guilty, why did she lie to the American public so many times? And if she isn't guilty, why did she say she didn't know how classified information worked and that she didn't know C meant classified? I mean, if she's not guilty, why is she doing those things? The only reason she's doing those things and saying those things is because she's guilty. And it's so obvious. I mean, I told my mom, mom, you realize Hillary had her people smash blackberries, 13 of them, with hammers. Smash them with hammers. My mom's like, really? No, that's not really true. I'm like, it's true. It's, it's a, you know, you can go read it for yourself if you know the right places to look. So if she's not guilty, why, why did she delete 33,000 emails and bleach bit them after a congressional subpoena? I mean, uh, listen, it's listen. insane. It, if, it's your defense, insane. if your defense is to delete subpoenaed, information or evidence to destroy mobile devices with hammers to have your people plead the fifth stop with the as michelle obama says they go ho they go low we go high you're insulting me when you say that yeah. if you if, if you act that way you're insulting me when you cite michelle obama uh is, is your defense of of they'll go low we'll go high now donald trump is not a saint He's got his own issues, but listen, man, I know that, you know, maybe our podcasts make better for when we have disagreements, but this, this woman, in my opinion, is a criminal. And even if she's not, even if she's not Ben, which I think she is, even if she's not, you, if you're running a small business, okay, and you've got eight employees and you need to add your ninth employee and you're interviewing someone and you say, have you ever been investigated by the FBI? And they say yes. No, and they, they say I'm actually currently under investigation. No, I, I, yes, yes. <laughs> no, no. No, I'm, I'm I'm actually current under investigation. So, what are you hiring that person? Hell no. So why are we? I'm why are them with a ten foot pole? So why are we okay with electing her as president? And here's why: because the other candidate who who I am in fact going to vote for, you know, and and I'm gonna I'm still in a sh ashamed. Trump support. I am you ashamed. Won't, you won't be by the end of my talk. I'm ashamed, You'll Ben. Be proud, this Tom. guy, 
this guy is 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 um he's an ass hat. I, I think that's the best way to describe. But 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 I don't believe he's corrupt. Yeah. So let me let me go beyond that. Beyond that, WikiLeaks showed the corruption and collusion that the government establishment has. Uh, you know, with all the foundation play to play, Morocco paid Hillary Clinton twenty eight million dollars. Qatar paid her. Saudi Arabia paid her for all these private meetings in favor. They sold uh, 20% of the United States uranium and miraculously the Clinton Foundation got $245 million from it. And so the, the amount of corruption and the amount of collusion between the establishment, the media, the Wall Street, the bankers, uh, the major corporations and the government is, this uh, is astounding. And that right now is what Donald Trump is capitalizing on with this drain the swamp because the American public, frankly, is so fed up with it because we all know it's there. And now it's just becoming more and more clairvoyant to us because what WikiLeaks is publishing, we're all seeing exactly how it works and exactly how it's going down in Washington. So I'm going to be done with it. I could go on on Hillary Clinton and the WikiLeaks stuff forever, but I'm going to tell you why you should vote for Donald and why you should be kind of happy about it, Tommy even though I don't think you are. Donald is the first non-establishment candidate in our lifetime, and he's one of the first people who's actually fighting for we the people, Tommy, which includes you. Not the corporations, not the bankers, not Wall Street, not the military industrial complex. He's fighting for we the people, and that's an important thing. Listen, the establishment is so big. Why do you think the Bushes threw their support behind Hillary Clinton? Because they're part of the establishment, right? They're supposed to be Republicans, but they're not. Why are all these Republicans? And now, Tommy, I kind of actually feel with this new investigation, the tide is kind of turning. I feel the tide turning against Hillary. Um, and hopefully it will even more in the next seven days. But if, if the Bushes push in Clinton doesn't show you that the establishment is fighting for one group, and that, and that is not Republican versus Democrat, that is the corporations, the banks, Wall Street, the military, the military industrial complex, I just can't stand the thought of them winning and being in charge. And I think it is time that we, the people, take America back. And, st- you know, the government right now is running on favors for all of those people. Um, and, and Donald Trump, Trump, the things he's saying, uh, restrictions on government officials being lobbyists after term limits on Congress, renegotiating these trade deals. How could you disagree with that? These are things that just common how sense. Could you, how They're could so you disagree common with sense. that? I don't and, know how you can disagree with that. Well, Tommy, the reason nobody has said it before is because the establishment doesn't want that because they all want to go make their big money being lobbyists after they're done with their congressional career, or after they're speaking done of, with whatever, of, right? Speaking of big money, speaking of big money, in 2013, Ben, over a five-month period, Hillary Clinton gave three speeches to Goldman Sachs for a total of 600 and $75,000 in compensation. Now, can you tell me any realistic global organization like Goldman Sachs that thinks it's in their company's best interest to hire the same speaker three times in five months? If that is not an example of bought and paid for, I don't know what is. No, it's 100%. And, uh, you know, and Bill is doing the same things. I forgot who the heck he got a million dollars from, Qatar or... Oman or, you know, one of those countries over there. So, uh, yeah, and it's ju- it just part of this. The Clinton Foundation is like, it's like, it, it pretty much encompasses the swamp that is Washington and the establishment and how everyone's yeah. paying for what they want. And the government is not working for we the people. And so Donald Trump is, I don't care what you say, he's one of the first people in my lifetime, at least that I can remember, and that is saying these things like there needs to be term limits. There yeah, he's just, he's this. just, listen, I agree. He's just saying it like a drunk uncle. And, he's saying and, it like it should be, Tommy. This shit's, no, not, this not shit's like common it should sense. Be. Here, here's my prediction on the elect, election. Just let me rant for two minutes. Here's what I think is going to happen. And it's, it's, it's a wet blanket with an uplift, uplifting ending, okay? I think Hillary's going to win the election. Ugh. Because the f- train is too far down the track. I don't know, Tommy. But I, 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 but I disagree. I, you're interrupting me. Okay, I'm okay. sorry. But I believe her four years as president will be the most embarrassing reveal of corruption in the history of this country. And thanks to Trump, this is thank credit Donald Trump, 
The dialogue of overthrowing the establishment political landscape is no longer taboo. So all bets are off now. Our, our, the political landscape moving forward is completely different. What you can say and how you can call out our government is completely changed because of Donald Trump. And I think the 2020 election will feature a Trump 2.0 candidate where he or her will crush the election. It will be a landslide, whether they're an independent, a libertarian, a, a Republican, or for some reason a Democrat, whatever party this person is, they're going to come in with Trump's sermon theme, but say it in a way that is more palatable to the American public, and they will absolutely crush the election. That's my prediction. Okay. Well, I, you know, I, I still think that uh, there, there's seven days left, and a lot of information could come out in those seven days. And I, I just I feel like this tide is turning. Um, end of the day, Tommy, it, it's time to drain the swamp. The corruption that WikiLeaks has exposed uh, is just so disgusting. It's it's so gross. It's so disgusting. And the government has been shown to not be working for the people, but for the corporations, Wall Street, etc., etc., etc. And it needs to turn back. It needs to change. We should shift. Uh, we should do the T. Row and Funky Politico podcast. Well, we can keep going if you want to. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> we got to get to some rest. Hey, here. you didn't even let me say it. What's up? Let's make America great again, Tommy. <laughs> I liked your rant, Ben. I mean, now you're, never, now you, now you're gonna go buy a uh, Make I've, America I've, Great I've, Again. I've, hat. I've never been a Trump fan, but but if 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 I. You know, I, I, I'm just, I'm going to vote for him. I, I've never voted Republican before, Tommy, for those who may say I'm biased. I've never done it. I voted independent twice and I voted Democrat once in, in the three times that I've been eligible to vote. Good for you, man. I, I, I've, I've officially um, redacted my Republican status. I am... I'm an independent voter. Yeah, now. I, I guess I shouldn't say independent. I should, I should say I voted Libertarian twice. I'm an independent voter. I mean, I, I, I don't have a party line i mean there are ideals that i embrace as opposed to other and you could argue that the majority of the ideals that i embrace reside more in the republican ideals but those are ideals those aren't candidates and so sure. that's why you know and that's why it's it's a tougher call for me uh-oh now, what do we got wow see tommy i told you i'm gonna click on playing the internet here but I, I told you this, the tides are in a turn because now USA Today, just uh, FBI surprises again. It shares files on Bill Clinton pardoned of Mark Rich. So Bill Clinton pardoned this guy, Mark Rich. Um, and the FBI is actually sharing this. And USA Today is covering it, which a lot of stuff that USA Today has not covered. So, man, I, just, I feel like the tide's turning and people are just like... Well, I think, I mean, my, my, my conspiracy theory is that Comey has a bomb, a bomb. An absolute bombshell um, that he knows about, and that's why he said he's going to further investigate it on Friday. He, you know, it's. I think there's news. My my, my gut tells me there's news that's coming out. Well, Big if well, so, let me ask you: this. If the FBI knows that she's going to be indicted, can they let her win? I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like that's a, that's a duty to the American public, right? Because how are you going to have a president and then gets indicted? Then who is the vice president? I'm assuming the vice president would take over in that case. I don't even know. It's pretty sad to be honest. Yeah. Um, okay, so wrestling. <laughs> Wait, let me. Uh, usually we film the or we tape. We film the tape. Usually we tape this on Tuesday night. Tommy, are we gonna tape this uh, live election coverage next week or what? We should, dude. That That'd would be, be kind of fun. Talk that a little wrestling. Fun. Talk uh, the numbers as they're coming up. I mean, because this time of night, uh, I would assume that a handful of the the races are going to be called. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hmm. Well, that that would be fun. All right, let's get into wrestling. We're gonna do uh, we're gonna do the weight by weight previews picks this year. Um, Tommy, start at one twenty five. You want you want to do odds or evens? What do you want? You 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 won the flip. What's your choice? You know, I, I, I we we agreed or we were texting back and forth today. We're gonna do picks and we're like, should we do it be a preview? Maybe let's just. Make a pick, but also just preview the contenders. You know well, what I mean? Well, we so, got nothing else to do tonight, so we got to talk a little. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. Okay. All right, I'll 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 go even. So okay, so so I lead off then. Um, NCAA A6 flow rankings. So I'm on the flow page. 
Man, 125 is not nearly as as deep as it has been in previous years. Usually we've had three or four contenders. Uh, so Flo goes, Gilman one, Peters two, Dance three, Shram four, Bresser five, McGee six, Cruz seven, and Rodriguez eight. And so what you got in there is, um, man, a bunch of these guys have never ever all American before. And obviously the dark horse that, that everyone's talking about is uh, Nick Soriano out of Penn State, who's going to wrestle the true freshman? And I, I, you know, obviously we talked about these these high school kids being more ready than ever before, but right. I, I'm not going to put my stamp on him till a couple months into the season. Let's just go see how he yeah, does. Yeah, I'm not stamping him yet. Um, let's see how he does. Obviously, Gilman, who I strongly dislike, not <laughs> only because of Iowa, but because of other actions, is I think he's the clear number one. I mean, I think. You know, you got Dance in there. Dance, Dance has been, you know, Dance blew a match. What, it was two years ago uh, in St. Louis. The quarters, he blew it against Gilman. He was winning easy and blew it in the third period. Right. So he can compete. I'm not sure that Dylan Peters can ever beat Gilman. Um, and, man, looking at that list beyond Joey Dance, uh, I love Barlow, and he's gotten a lot better, but he, he's going to have to prove that he can beat Gilman before I yeah. can pick him. So I guess, unfortunately, I'm going to pick Thomas Gilman. Unfortunately, yep. I'm I'm going to pick Gilman too. Uh, I've got a, I I think Joey Dance probably has, you know, if there's a someone that could go through that tournament in a dominant fashion, I would pick for it to be Joey Dance. But you know, Gilman just has a little bit more grit and. And I don't mean that Gans is, Dance is soft. I think he, Gilman he's, has... He's a little soft. G Gilman has that battle-tested grit where I feel like he can get through the tournament. I think he, you know, he's been in the semis two years in a row, was in the finals last year. I'm going with Gilman, too. And I, and I think Dance is the only true threat to Gilman's style, if that makes sense. Yes, uh, that makes sense to me. I, I am curious. Nick Nick Seriano is very good, so I am curious. And then obviously Penn State's done a great. You just job. can't put a stamp on it. November first. Yeah, 1st. it's just hard. You you never know. Maybe he's cutting too much weight. Maybe he's having trouble in school. Maybe he misses his girlfriend. You just never know with freshmen. You, you usually you'll know by like January if he's yeah. you know. You I know mean, I don't know if you remember Zach Espo. He's, he was my grade, but he came oh, out, yeah. he came out on fire, and I think you know on fire on fire cutting too much weight, and he just he kind of flamed out at the end of the year, and he ended up uh, not placing it in days. So um, doing he that was is, he was cutting so he much was cutting weight. a lot of weight, yeah, so much weight. So that that was an issue, but who knows, Suriano? I don't think he's a small twenty five. If that's fair, is that fair? No, he's. I don't. I don't think he's small. Okay. Probably not cutting as much weight as Espo was that year, but... No, not at all. All right, 33, your pick. 33, We I think we've got three guys that can win it, um, and then some other pretty good challengers, but you got Corey Clark, Tomasello, Zane Richards, both, all three of them have accomplished some unique things. None more accomplished than Tomasello, but he's moving up a weight. He's also kind of short, so there's some question marks on how he can do with the bump. Um, I obviously am biased towards the Buckeyes. Uh, I think knowing how closely Johnny DeJulius can compete with Corey Clark um, is kind of my barometer to gauge, you know, Tomasello and how he can compete against Corey Clark and then Zane Richards. Um, you know, him and I think Richards and Clark go back and forth. Is that correct, Ben? Yeah, they usually. Uh, Pretty much. I would say Clark slightly gets the better of him, but yeah, yeah, it's back and forth. I'm going to give Thomas Settle the slight edge. I would give him a bigger edge, um, and I probably will. Like, let's say after the Vegas tournament, I'll, I'll know more. I've got a feeling that Thomas Sello might create a gap because I think he is the bit more skilled wrestler out of all of these, this entire group. Um, just the size adjustment is a little bit of a concern for me, but long story short, I'm still going to give it to Tomasello. Tommy, you're falling into the same bias that our boy Willie at Flow always falls into. And it's so funny because Piles talks logically to him. Remember, that's why I picked Piles as my VP candidate. And then <laughs> w Willie admits he acknowledges what Christian's saying, but then something inside of him just can't let go of it. And that's... Every time a guy moves up in weight, he's like, oh, they're not going to do as well. They're small for that weight. When if you look at any historical data over the last 10 years of guys moving up in weight, 
I think my brother is about the only person to ever move down in weight and do better. I mean, everybody moves up and does better. Everybody has better performances because cutting weight on a one hour weigh in is just not conducive to having a, a, you know, a strong amount of success. Well, I would I would agree with that. The only thing I'll say is that Nathan Tomasello won the Nationals as a freshman and had one loss last year. So for him to do better would mean that he needs to win it. Well, look, look if at, he does, if look he at how much better Nashawn Garrett did when he bumped up. I'm just saying, if he doesn't win it, you could argue that it was the wrong move. Well, I'm assuming that he he's moving up because he has to, not because he wants. You know, he's he's feeling uh, it was a he's choice. feeling it like was a choice. that cut to 25 is neg- negatively impacting his performance. No, no, I, I know that he yeah. feels that way, and 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 it's like I'm not. I mean, he's a he's a champion, he's a stud, but to be fair, he's got to win it for that to be an undeniable smart move, because the he's beaten everybody down low, and he can still make the weight if he wanted to. Could he? Yes, he could. Yeah. yeah. Now yeah. I think he's big enough for thirty three. I'm not saying he's too small, but it is he's he's making a choice to focus on wrestling more and cutting weight less. But he's not forced to go one thirty three in my opinion. Hmm. That that's interesting. Right. That is very interesting. I could uh, be wrong. I, mean, I I got a little bit of inside news, but I mean it's not like I talk to the coaches every day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I, I'm going to stick with um, my thing that, that guys traditionally do better when they move up because um, feeling good and being able to practice hard on a regular basis is, is conducive to success, and, and cutting weight at the college level has kind of been proven that it's not. I mean, you know, we go back through the examples. Moving up has been proven to be the best choice. Would, so, you, are, would, you, would you agree, though, that he has to win it for it to be um, the right move? Well, he took third last year. He took third, correct? With a lot, with one loss. With one loss. So yeah, I mean, he's gonna have to either win it or take second, and you know, then it's I don't kind know. Of a, I think he's, you know. I think he's got to win it because okay. if he gets second, you know, you could wonder if he would have got first at twenty five because we know that, that that he's capable sure, of that. Sure, sure. And so, and the thing, the thing that I'm gonna, we're gonna hear people say about this, and I'm, you know, I'm talking about a Buckeye here, so I love the guy, but you're gonna hear people. Some of our viewers are gonna say, yeah, but he might wrestle better at thirty three. I'm not talking about him looking better. I'm talking about him winning, you know, and I think yeah. he's got to win for it to be a good move. Sure, I can feel you there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say that Clark Thomasello, Richard to the top three um, out of that trio. I, I'm gonna pick Thomasello. He he's got the most ways to win, in my opinion. Um, Clark is yeah. limited offensively. Uh, Richard, he's good, but he seems to always just make the mistakes at the wrong time, um, and that's kind of what's cost him against Clark. I, I do like the young guys in this class, and one of them is a Missouri guy. But so the young guys being Cade Brock, Stephen Mitchick, and, and Jaden Ironman, all freshmen. Well, Brock's a sophomore, tech, but he's really a freshman, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I like those guys. I think they're really good. I think they can compete with the best. And so I'm interested to see how those guys factor in. Again, like Suriano, it's hard to say exactly how they're going to do CSC, but I, I know I was in Missouri. And the Missouri coaching staff, the Missouri team, is very high on, on Jaden Ironman. Uh, and he has a, he's a guy who can score points from everywhere. He's good on bottom. He's good on top. He can wrestle in scrambles. He can attack. And, and, you know, when you're looking at what makes, you know, if you look at the best guys over the last five years, they're guys that can wrestle from every position. And, and he's one of those guys. So it's going to be interesting to see how he factors in. I don't know how early in the year he's going to get a big challenge. Uh, if I pulled up the Missouri – Schedule, I could probably look. Hey, Ben, can I yeah. ask you a question? Of so, Ironman was Jaden Cox's coach, and Correct. his, I think it's his adopted son or something yes. along those lines. Correct. His name is Jaden Ironman. Correct. But spelled differently. Yeah. That's that's pretty interesting. Yeah, Jaden and Jaden. It's crazy. Yeah. And they're like, <laughs> to, my, to my knowledge, they're like best friends, too. So That's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. it works out good. They're, they're, they're really good buddies. Um, I, I want to say they even lived together for a little while. Um, cool. Yeah, they're real tight. Let's see. Missouri's going to the UNI Open. And, oh, I don't know if I'm going to be in the, in the country for this, but if I am, I might fly down, Tommy. Thursday night, December 8th. At, you got to do it, man. If I'm in the country, I'm coming. We should take Coach Smith to dinner. Okay. If I if I am in the United States, I'm going to that dueling. Got it. Let's I'll, do it. I'll fly in for the night. 
Um, Maybe they'll let us call the match live. Oh, I bet they, they probably would, wouldn't they? I mean, we got a podcast. That's, your, that's your people there. Okay, I'll ask Tom Ryan if we can but call. But we, we, we don't know how to do it live, though, Tommy. We can only do it recorded. I think we should do it live in the arena. I know, but I'm saying how do we broadcast it live? No, I'm saying we should be speaking to the par- spectators. Oh, that, uh, I don't know about all that. <laughs> I don't know all that. All right. I, I okay. would like to do a live podcast, though. Um, so people can listen to We should to do us. them at the NCAA. Flo, is in let's, just right ask, let's just ask Flo how do we do that. Flo, yeah. Flo Martin, Martin. Martin, hit us up. Do it. Okay, I'll, I'm going to text him right now. Martin. All right, 41, you go. Oh, okay, wait, hold on. I'm texting somebody right now. Damn it. Um, okay, and i got to move my rankings here. Make sure you delete 41's it. 41's a mess. 41's a mess. I look at 41 and I'm like, I don't know. This is just like. A lot of these guys could win. I, you know, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, hell, CP ranked Jimmy Goulibon number one last year, and he's all the way down there at number 12 now. Um, CP's, or I'm uh, sorry. Uh, I, love how de- I love how defensive CP gets um, when he makes the difference between he's, he's, uh, CP a, has, a prediction CP has. and a ranking. A prediction and a ranking are different things because a ranking is based oh, on what yeah. they've done. CP, listen, CP has no ugly babies, dude. None. <laughs> <laughs> He's got none. Oh, man, it's funny. Um, okay, I'm texting Martin. Hey, Martin. How, how do we podcast live from T-O-S-U? There we go. Just send it. Boom. All right. All right. So who you got? Who you got? All right. Well, got, Hiles got obviously Kuban. the defending champ. No way. Um, <laughs> McKenna's right in there with them. Meredith made the finals. Jack is good. Ashnault's good. Ward good. He couldn't win. And then you got Manley at seven. Who he had the big injury last year. That that was unfortunate. Randy Cruz who lost his wrestle off at at eight. Tommy Thorne who suspended at nine. Oh, Matt Kladzik, I think he could be really good. And Keyshawn, he really could. I think Keyshawn could be really good, too. So, again, um, we had a lot of interesting freshmen in, in this class. And may, maybe it's every year. But to me, this year seems uh, exceptionally deep with, with interesting freshmen who we're not really sure how they're going to do yet. Um, I'll, go, I'll go McKenna. To me, Heil wrestles all of these. I know he's a Heil boy, but he wrestles all these really close matches. And Completely I just feel agree. like if you play with fire, you're going to get burnt at some point. Yeah, I don't think he makes it back through the tournament with, with um, the way that he wins his matches. And I think that, you know, thankfully he's a junior. I think, you know, I guess I think that he's probably going to stick with what's been working. And I think he's just going to be a more scouted, more scrutinized, more, you know, played out type of strategy against him. And it'll, it'll cost him a little bit, I think, this year. I like him. He's a good wrestler. And maybe a senior year he can wrestle a little differently. But last year he had, he had a lot of squeakers, man. It's hard to just sustain that type of um, – you know, the only guys that can sustain squeakers – That's hard. I, are, can, can are, anyone? Are, are freakishly talented or, as you would say, they have a lot of innate gifts. Tommy, I just bought this book, Peak, which is written by Anders Erickson. He's like one of the preeminent researchers on um, – on what people would perceive as talent. So once I read it, I'm going to have way more statistics for you. Dude, nice. bring it. Talent exists. So my pick, uh, and I like the McKenna pick. He's my number two pick. But I am going to go with Anthony Ashnault at Rus- Rutgers. Um, really? Yeah, I like the way he wrestles. I think Donnie Pritzlav is an exceptional coach. I think Coach Goodale is a good coach too. But I think Donnie Pritzlav is a great coach. I think I think he's going on his third year at Rutgers. Is this his third coming year at Rutgers? And um, I, I just think that Ashnault, he's been battle tested his whole life. Not that McKenna and those guys haven't. I just think this is his year. I'm going okay. with Ash. And then McKenna number two for me. And then I'm gonna go with Kaladzic number three. Kaladzic, really? Yeah, yeah Kaladzic's Kaladzic's probably. I think he's gonna be top five this year for sure. He's probably my third. He's my third pick. All right. Okay. 49, 49, 49. 49 is you. I'm, I'm going with – who do you get, Who do you think I'm going with? I'm, I mean, I don't know how you'd pick against Zane if you were you. I'm going with Zane Rutherford. <laughs> going out on a limb there, Tommy. Yeah, not even close. I will take Mick Jordan at number two. 
Ouch. Okay. So I was going to say, this is a weight that, so far we've had a bunch of interesting freshmen. This weight has no interesting freshmen to me. Uh, Levon, at number three, I was really hoping he was going to get to wrestle Sorensen or Rutherford at at the All-Star. Um, he's wrestling Kalika, which, like I said, they wrestled twice at NCAAs. I'm not really that curious uh, about how that match is going to go because we just saw it twice in the last match of last year. Um, so I, I want to see him against Sorensen and Rutherford. I think he's the only guy of the bunch that has a style that could potentially be competitive with Rutherford. He can score from the outside, which would, would negate you know Rutherford getting hands-on. Um, he's very explosive. He finishes clean. Um, so he won't have to get in the scrambles with Rutherford. So I think he, Levon is the only one who could potentially compete with Rutherford. Um, and as, as my top four, I would say Zane Soros and Levon and Micah Jordan in no particular order. Um, Micah Jordan obviously struggled last year. Apparently it was because he's cutting a lot of weight. I'm not there. I'm not sure that that's for sure. But uh, a lot of people are high on him. So let's see how he does. Um, and, and then this is going to be a fun weight. Absolutely. I'm with you. All right. Now, it, now me first on 57. Correct. Yep. All right. Now, this weight's kind of boring to me only because I feel like Jason Nolf is so much better than everybody else. Um, I would say that that's mostly true. Mostly? Um, well, I, I think Joe Smith, the, the style that he has, and he got smoked out by Nolf. Well, I wouldn't say smoked out. Yeah, but he, it wasn't that bad. Sure. Yeah, it, it kind of the wheels fell off at the very end, but yeah, it just wouldn't shock me if Joe Smith puts together a good match against Nolf. But I'm not picking against Nolf. Sure. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. I can't put a stamp on Nolf dominating Joe Smith. Huh. And so for me, uh, you got Nolf and you got everybody else. Palacio's good, but. He's hit or miss. He makes mistakes, does silly things. He is um, hit or miss. Joe Smith, to me, and you know, it's a freshman thing because it is a long season. Um, he kind of fell off towards the end of the year for me. I think he, he was he was a little better early on. Uh, and then there, there's another freshman here that Michael Kemmer, and I think this is interesting because Kemmer and Nolf are from the same club, meaning they've been in the same practice room. And sometimes, even when one guy is way better than the other, and I'm not saying that's the case because I'm not sure. Um, when you've practiced it together for so long, it's still a close match. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying there? Absolutely. And so Kemmerer versus Nolf, I feel like is going to be a close match because the guys know each other. And, and I watched, the only time I watched Kemmerer was against, I believe he wrestled Adam Hall at universities. And, and, and I think, I'm pretty sure that's who it was. And I think Adam Hall beat him up pretty good. Um, that being said, Adam Hall is really freaking good. So, it, you know, and he's a ways removed from college competition. So I think he could, uh, you know, figure in there. And then you also got Max Roshkoff from NC State, who had a really good year, 165, has now dropped down to 57. And he's wrestling the All-Star versus number four, Brian Murphy. So we should get, get a good look at those two right off the bat. Absolutely. Ohio boy, Roshkoff. There you go. <laughs> You're such a uh, dork. <laughs> All right, 65. I'm this going, is I'm, the most fun weight class. Eh, nah, I don't think it is. I think 74 is the most no, fun. No, this one's the most fun. 65? Yes. Eh. I'm going with Imar. Are you crazy? I'm going with Imar. It's, I, I kind of feel like I actually could see Imar taking a loss this year, but I think going through what he went through last year and beating Nolf at the Big Tens and the Nationals, I just think he's got that that metal about him that um, – and when I say metal, I mean M-E-T-T-L-E, the metal about him that mm. he um, – I just think he's 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 cruising in March and uh, I'm going to take him over all these guys. Sure. And, and so how do you think it's going to affect him if at all he, he's trying – he is trying out for the world team. I believe – is that this weekend or is it two weekends from now? At the I want to say two weekends from now is what I want to say, but I'm not positive. Okay, so he is uh, he's trying out for the world team, which then if he wins that, uh, it, that's mid-December. Is that correct, mid-December? Yep. And so he wouldn't really start his college season probably until, I don't know. Mid to late Jan. Mid to late like January. That. So he's yep. kind of taking the Kyle Snyder. I don't think it will affect him too much. And honestly, okay. you know – 
like I said, I have some hesitations about Tomasello going up. When I picture Imar going up, for some reason, it just doesn't bother me. No, it doesn't. Tomasello doesn't bother me going up either. So, um, no, and Real Budo was at this weight. I think he looked at how much tougher this weight was going to be than 74, and he went back up. I can't confirm that. Um, I should ask my brother, and he could probably tell me the answer. I don't, I don't think 74 is uh, weak. Uh, well, if, I think if you take him out of the picture, it's not that great. Oh, um, is Nickel red shirting? He's going up. He's at 84, I didn't Oh, yeah, know. 84 is the best weight. I take my previous statement about 865. I thought Nickel was going 74. No. Yeah, 84 is the best then. Okay, so then you got Isaac Jordan, Daniel Lewis. That's going to be a fun one. That's happening this weekend at the at the All-Star. I got Lewis over Jordan, and I, I think Lewis is going to be the one to push Imar uh, out of this group. And they should, it should be fun, man, because Lewis wasn't scared of Bojo or I. Uh, um, Alex Deringer last year, and he, he kind of pushed both those guys. Mm-hmm. Um, man, he's tough. So he's tough on bottom, tough on top, tough on his feet. Um, it should be fun to, fun to watch him push IMR. Absolutely. All right, but I will pick IMR. <laughs> All right, 74 is not that tough. Bo Jordan, and now obviously... Valencia. Oh, they've got real Budo at 8. That's brutal. It's, well, is Valencia me- going here? Or is yeah, he he's at fifteen. Oh, ooh, this is one got, of those. This is one of those. I got well, Bojo. Like, Piles. Then- well, okay, listen, Piles is like, but he hasn't done anything at the college level. Christian, I'm not picking on you, bro, but Valencia beat both the NCAA champion and the NCAA runner-up at this weight. I get it was in freestyle. Put him higher than freaking fifteen. Fifteen. Mm-hmm. My God, fifteen. Come on. He's got no ugly babies, man. You know the one thing I will say about. CP though, um, he's consistent. He's consistent, and he backs it up with logic. He's too logical. Some I picked oh, up yeah. my 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 cabinet because he's logical. But sometimes too much logic. You know what that thing where they say everything in moderation, including moderation. Christian's got to use some moderation with his logic sometimes. Like Valencia is going to be higher than fifteenth. Well, sometimes yeah, like you know how you coach some guys, and sometimes you wish they weren't as smart as they are. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Anyways, that I, that that's, that's not even doesn't even correlate with my comment about CP because he is a pretty logical guy and but yeah we all know Valencia is not fifteen including CP I think it's Bojo, um, uh, Valencia, and I think Real Budo. I'm I'm, so I'm gonna pick Real Budo. I, I'm biased obviously. Um, I'm going with I'm going with Bo Jordan. Yeah, obviously. Going Bo Jordan. Obviously, uh, you know it. I'll tell you why I'm not picking Bo because he sucks on bottom. Is that yeah, mean? That gonna, was kind of uh, mean. Real Budo's tough on top. Yeah. Bo Jordan needs to get better on bottom. He has to. He absolutely. Yeah, he, does. he got ridden out by Isaac too many times. He's got to get better on bottom if he's gonna win a title. And because don't tell me that every single person in their scouting report doesn't have Bo Jordan ride him like a donkey, right? It's definitely in there. It's in there. So no doubt about it. Hope maybe who knows? Maybe the Iowa, Iowa, uh, Iowa, Ohio State coaching staff got him squared up on bottom. Well, I'm so. sure it's a focal point. I, I got Bojo. All right, fair enough. So I got I got real Budo over Bojo in the finals. Valencia third. Is that fair? There you go. That's fair. That's fair. I think a lot of people are going to pick Valencia, though. I think a lot think of people so? like. Yeah, I think our viewers, even though he's a freshman, I think they're going to say he's the guy. Well, I did. I guess I did forget to. Um, man, yeah. I, I mean, I guess he did beat the NCAA champ and the NCAA runner-up last year. Um, <laughs> all right, you're up on eighty-four. Eighty-four. I'm going to go with Gabe Dean. I wish I could modify this after the All-Star meet on Saturday. Oh, you would. Because even if Miles Martin doesn't win, I just want to see what I see and then make a guess. I got a feeling I'm going to say Miles Martin after the All Star meet, but I think Gabe Dean, two time <laughs> defending, he's two time defending champ. He's extremely solid. He's got good leg attacks to both sides. Uh, he's a disciplined wrestler. I don't know how you don't pick against him. It's his weight class, um, but I think I might be modifying that here next week. What about Bo Nickel? I don't. I don't. I don't think he's as good as Miles Martin and Gabe Dean. And I know that Bo Nickel is 3-1. and one Do you think Bo Nickel versus, developed a leg attack? Um, not 
I, I don't. I, it's hard to say because he took he took Mymar down with some leg attacks last year. But yeah, but it's off of. I, 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 yeah, that's exactly right. So I just think I watched Miles Martin at wrestle offs, and it was frightening in a good way to watch him wrestle. It was yeah. like wow, and he's just. I don't. The other thing about Bo Nickel is I don't see him being, um, a big eighty four or even a good size eighty four. Really. I don't know. He's kind of tall, though. He's tall. It just doesn't look like like he does. It looks like he doesn't have the shoulders, and he doesn't look like it doesn't look like he has the frame for eighty four. He could show up on the mat, and I could be completely out of my mind. I mean, I don't know the guy. I've never even stood next to him. You know what I mean? But I, I'm going. D, it's Dean or Mymar, and I'm going to give Dean the slight edge right now. Wow, you count, you count. And that is with Nickel. That is with Nickel having a three one three one. Um, count Nickel out. Wow, Tommy. Who you got? Probably Gabe Dean. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Gabe Dean. You're always going with the safe pick. Safe pick? I picked Robudo and they got him at eight. <laughs> the last one. You went with Bojo. I took Ash now. I took Ash now. That, that was a ballsy pick. Oh, but it, probably a bad pick, though. Yeah, these next two weight classes are so boring. Yeah, they, they really are. Um, they, they really are. 97 is. is, is it's not a great weight class right now. There's just there's no other way to put. that. And you have an Olympic bronze medalist at the top. And you have an Olympic bronze medalist. I the one thing I would like to see, and I know Jaden wants a Hodge Trophy uh, to to go next to mine. In the I don't trophy think he has the style. In Missouri, um, he's got to pick it up. He's not. He's not going to get it. And but this might... weight class is weak. This is a weight class he could get. Yeah, he just if he turns gonna... it up. If he turns it up, he can pin these dudes. He's not going to be able to do what Zane Rutherford's going to do. If Zane Rutherford takes one on the chin, which I don't see happening, but if he did, then I think Jaden could be the guy for the for the Hodge. But I think it's Zane's to lose. You got Imar in there. You got Gabe Dean in there. Man, I don't see Jaden Cox winning the Hodge. And I, 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 do, Dean, and I do, Dean's not winning. That was that and I class. do think he's the second best, arguably the best, Pound for pound college wrestler. No, right now. no, Nolf. I mean, in my opinion, God, Nolf? The, the Hodge competitions, Nolf, Rutherford, and, and Cox, because Snyder's not going to wrestle enough matches to get it. And if Imar does the the Olympic thing, um, the non Olympic weight, he's in the same boat. But can't, okay, so that's fine. But don't you agree that Rutherford and Nolf are way ahead of Cox in terms of what it takes to win the Hodge? In terms of bonus points, yes. Right. Right. So, uh, Pound for pound, Jaden Cox is number five that on flow wrestling. That, it's I I I got on. Let's talk. Let's okay. So I debated. So 97, I debated this Ninety-seven. Point. We got Cox. It's ninety-seven. Cox and got everybody Cox, else. And then heavyweight, we got Snyder. Hey, heavyweight's actually got you know like top-notch guys. They have a few other top-notch guys, but there's just no one that's going to challenge Snyder. And that's all there is to it. And what do you think of pound for pound, Ben? I I so I was on. I came. I I told. Uh, Willie and CP, they had to have me on to talk about the pound for pound because I strongly disagreed. I, I and my my sentiment was that Olympic medals trump all, and you know they they put Snyder won, and Snyder's never been particularly huge on bonus points, especially pins, and pins is one of the main criteria. But I don't disagree with Snyder. What I disagree with is Cox at five. Yeah, oh um, yeah. So I'm on the same train. So I said, I said Olympic Olympic medals trump all. And so yeah, Snyder Cox won two ahead of everybody, um, and and then when you're thinking about what they no, say, well, they were arguing the bonus point thing, and I said yeah, a bonus points. And listen, I'm a bonus point guy through and through. Um, I mean, there's been very few people who've bonus like I have over a collegiate career. I mean, you probably count them on your hand. Right. Uh, so when, when you're talking about bonus points, I think that's a good separator when. You have collegiate accomplishments versus collegiate accomplishments. Now, when guys go over and above and they win Olympic medals, well, I mean, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good tiebreaker. To your point, yeah. you know, if it was if if Cox lost to Dake in the Olympic trial finals last April, and then and he never made the Olympic team, never got the bronze, you could say, you know, his his career thus far at the collegiate level, Rutherford should be ahead of him in pound for pound, Nolf. Yeah, even Nolf maybe shouldn't be, but Imar and Rutherford should be. But instead, he beat Kyle Dake. He wrestled great overseas. 
he was uh, you know, a takedown away from going to the Olympic final and got the bronze, and I agree he should be number two. Yeah, and then um and and then the other thing about that is and I you know, it's I said it brutally, but uh hell no floss to a high school kid three times last year. Right? <laughs> That's the truth. Cox, Cox won and he went and won an Olympic bronze medal. Nolf, as good as he is, uh, can't, Imar can't got, make and, the 29er team. And, and Imar got pinned last year. Yeah, so I by the I, guy that lost to the high school kid. Yeah, so I just can't see that argument. I think Olympic, to me, Olympic medals um, are, are over and above. Uh, well, I would even say else. world medals are the same. I mean, it's, oh yeah, Olympic world medals. Sure, you're yeah, right. Yeah. Ma- making a world team period. So who's your pound for pound? Mine is Snyder. I think it's then Cox, yeah. Then Rutherford, yes. Then Martinez, yep. And then, ah, uh, gosh, either Dean or Nolf. I'm not sure who I take over. Yeah, and the thing about Nolf, he was he was so dominant, but he still has no titles, and Dean's got two titles to his name. Although, yeah, he, he does have some losses that are kind of like, eh, yeah. It's not He's very got some good. wins too, though. He's got you know the, uh, Ed Ruth and yeah. Um, I, then, I'm, going, I'm I'm taking Dean over Nolf strictly on the fact that he's got two titles and Nolf has yeah. zero. I feel like once you go below that that six mark, it, it's a big jump to the next guy, which is oh yeah, big Thomas jump. Thomas L. Clark Gilman. I, I feel like that's just a that's a huge gap. As as much as you know, one through six, I think you could debate. I think um, going past that, it's just it's undebatable. Undebatable is that a word? Not debatable. Uh, yeah, um, something like that. All right. Um, okay. We good, man? I don't know what I was going to talk about. The Cubs won tonight. Go Cubs. They didn't win yet. They're just up 7-1, to one and it's the bottom of the fifth. So, they're going to win. I'll send you a Make America Great hat, Tommy. That's perfect. So, let's <laughs> let's let's do the... Right, li- live live coverage next week. The T-Row I'm Club in on show. that. That'll be fun. All right. Well, that's... All right, good. man. This Thank is kind you, of Defense a shorter Soap. show, but that's fine. Thank you, Defense Soap. All right, you have a good night, Tommy. All right, brother. See ya. See ya. You are listening to the T-Row and Funky Show brought to you by Defense Soap. Defend what you have built.